Millions of years ago, this island, Madagascar, split off from Africa. Since then, the animals and plants have taken off on a bizarre and incredible evolutionary journey. I'm Art Wolf, exploring wild Madagascar. Join me on Travels to the Edge. Madagascar lies off the southeast coast of Africa, the fourth largest oceanic island on Earth. Its size and geographic isolation have given rise to an abundance of biodiversity and unique landscapes. It's home to 5% of all the world's plants and animals, over 200,000 species. And 80% of those species are unique to Madagascar. But while Madagascar is one of the world's largest islands, it is densely populated by its Malagasy people. Most of them are farmers, and as a result, 90% of the island's original habitat has been lost to agriculture. The places that remain intact in Madagascar are really there simply because they're so difficult to get to. The terrain and distances are great, and that is quite honestly why they still exist. Singi Bamara National Park, which is the largest preserve here in Madagascar. The Singi looks like this jagged matrix of pinnacles and mountains that are rising into the sky. I'm very excited to start to get in and explore the various caverns and ridges and valleys in between these very jagged karst limestone formations. The Singi is a national park here in Madagascar, and so when you enter this landscape, you're required to have a guide. This is an amazing labyrinth of deep passageways and narrow canyons. And all along the way, there's roots that reach down from trees 200 feet above that get all the way down here into the deepest recesses where the water collects. The environment of the Singi is a real challenge, not only to move through and negotiate these jagged, razor-sharp pinnacles or rocks, but just to get a photograph is a real challenge. get tired because you're either moving up or moving down, but rarely are you moving parallel. Whew. This is steep. Okay, crossing a 200 foot chasm above rock, razor rock. Oh yeah. try to do in a landscape like this is to emphasize what's most important about it and to me it's the texture of the rocks. This is truly a unique landscape here in Madagascar and yet Madagascar itself is a vast island of unique phenomenon. We're about to see and explore the rest of this great island.
into a remote reserve, one of the few remaining patches of original rainforest on this environmentally challenged island. Because of Madagascar's biological richness, it's the top priority for many of the world's conservation groups. Accompanying me on this journey through Madagascar is Russ Middemeyer, noted conservationist and an expert in primatology. Russ, you've got projects all around the world. What, what's so great about Madagascar? Well, Madagascar, from a biodiversity perspective, is really a country of superlatives. Uh, we who work in the so-called biodiversity hotspots consider Madagascar to be the single highest priority hotspot on the planet. It's just an amazing place. I mean, it's been separated from the African mainland for probably about 160 million years and separated from India, to which it was also connected, for about 80 or 90 million years. So for that whole period, evolution has proceeded on its own in isolation from the rest of the world. So you've got a variety of animals here that are unique and the levels of endemism, species that occur nowhere else, are unmatched on the planet. I mean, what attracted me here to begin with was the lemurs, these non-human right. primates that are 100% endemic to Madagascar. When I was here before, they were so gentle. They're almost like a polite monkey in a way. They're very much like a polite monkey. They're not terribly aggressive. You can get quite close to them. When you're walking through a forest like this, um, looking for lemurs, do you hear them first or see movement or what's... I would say about uh, 70, 80% of the time, you hear them. Are they mad at me? Uh, no, they're just trying to let one another know where they are. This they is are a so loud. Black and white rough lemur call, which is one of the great sounds of the of the Malagasy forest. I've got two rough lemurs curled up on this branch high up in the forest canopy. They've got the same markings, the color patterns of a giant panda, but infinitely smaller and more slender. So how would you term this kind of forest right here? Well, this is a higher altitude rainforest, mm -hmm. a high plateau forest. We're at about 1,200 to 1,400 meters here. And this is the last big chunk of high altitude rainforest. It's beautiful with all the lichen. It really is pretty. It really is pretty. And this is very, very unique as a habitat. I'm photographing one of the most unique animals in all of Madagascar. It's called the leaf tail gecko. And they rely almost entirely on their ability to blend in on the trunks of these rainforest trees. So there's patches of lichens, and if their arm or their torso covers that lichen, they'll pick up the line of the lichen to continue their perfect camouflage. They seem to dissolve into this beautiful environment. Right now I'm photographing the largest of the lemurs, the entry, and he's just in the open. I think I'm getting some pretty nice shots. It's a very special opportunity to be able to see these injuries because, in fact, they cannot be kept in captivity. They've never been successfully kept in captivity. So if you want to see them, you got to come to Madagascar. So I got a beautiful call. Oh, the call is just fantastic. And you have about 60, more than 60 groups. So this is a territorial call. And what they're doing is they're saying, hey, we're here. 
don't invade our space, otherwise we'll have a fight. So it's a way of spacing the different groups. The Indria is the biggest of the living lemurs. It gets up to about nine kilos, a little over 20 pounds, and about a meter, maybe three feet tall. Fantastic animal. They have really funny ears, don't they? Yeah, yeah, and funny eyes. They look like they just came off a spaceship. Well, I love photographing any animal that's got such strong colors and patterns. I love the lines and then the spots and more lines. And towards his head, it actually starts to turn green and red. Yeah, this is one of my favorites, if not my favorite chameleon, this little high altitude uh, Furcifer Campani chameleon. And to me, it looks like an aboriginal dot painting. I think it's just fabulous. As amazing as it is, it's just one example of the spectacular diversity of chameleons that you have here in Madagascar. More than 60 species, more species of chameleons than in any other country. So it's, it's, uh, it's again, one of these wonderful flagship groups like the lemurs that really make Madagascar what it is. I love photographing chameleons. They're so strange. They're the animal that seems to be made up of parts from all sorts of other animals. One of the most unique features of the chameleon is the fact that their eyes move independently from one another, and it gives them this really comical appearance. This is the Parsons chameleon, one of the two largest species of chameleons here in Madagascar, large enough, in fact, to even eat birds. Incredible animal. And you can see how slow this animal moves, and it's a strategy not only enabling it to catch its prey, but to escape predation by birds of prey and other animals that might, in fact, zero in on these creatures. They're an extraordinary animal, a reptile with personality. This is just the most beautiful of all the lemurs. This is the diadem tsifak. It's the second biggest after the Indri. And it moves by vertical clinging and leaping, and it's capable of these incredible jumps that can probably jump 30 feet at a shot. It's really got a lot of colors to it. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. You know, Russ, this rainforest seems to go on forever, but how big is it actually? It's really a tiny fragment. This particular reserve in the adjacent national park is only a little over 10,000 hectares. It's about 25,000 acres. And Madagascar has already lost 90% of its original natural vegetation. And only 3% of the country is conserved. So there's a huge challenge ahead to make sure that virtually all of the remaining intact forest is conserved because it has so much biodiversity packed into it. We get a view of what deforestation looks like in Madagascar as we drive through a forest recently slashed and burned for farming. I love those serendipitous moments when you get unexpected photographic opportunities. This is amazing. This tamarind tree behind me is literally full of giant fruit bats with wingspans up to three feet. It's very cool. I've never photographed fruit bats like this before. I'm getting a really nice shot right now of a single bat hanging, and the sun is just catching his eyes in a very nice way. And it's beautiful. It looks happy sitting there in the breeze and looking straight at me. Not a bad shot for an upside down bat. The fruit bats are known also as flying foxes because they really do look like foxes with big wings. Right as the sun will set now, they all take to the air. And when they fly overhead, the sun backlights through their wings. Madagascar's diversity of landscapes becomes obvious as we enter the spiny forest. 
Well, this is kind of a, a pretty tough environment to have a village. Well, this is a village of the, the Antandroid people. These are the people of the Spiny Desert, and they live in what are probably the harshest conditions of any human group in, uh, in Madagascar. Very little water here, and obviously it's uh, quite, quite difficult to eke a, eke a living out of this, uh, this desert, but they managed to do it. Yeah, so everybody's and, hanging out under these trees. Yeah, trying to keep cool in the, in the heat of the day. Do you know how to say hello? And Salama Tumku. Salam Tumku. Salama Tumku. Salama Tumku. Salam Tumku. Salam Tumku. is really relegated to the, what, the south and the west part of Madagascar, right? Yeah, it's basically in the southern part of the country, and this region is really very, very special because of the plant species that are found here, 95% of the species and 45% of the plant genera are endemic, not just to Madagascar, but to this region alone. Walking through the spiny forest is a real treat, simply because virtually every plant and tree is unknown to me. They look like cactus, but they're not. They're very pointed and prickly, and yet there's a sublime beauty to the place. It's like a prehistoric garden. quite an experience to be in the spiny forest and suddenly stumble upon two troops of Safaka battling over territory. All right, this is great because you're getting a fight between two groups. You just saw this one animal yeah. scent marking the tree and now the other ones are scent marking over there. So they're just bouncing towards one. Look, 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 they're right in the border between their territory. And they're, oh, this is excellent. Didn't think we'd see this. <laughs> they move like, so fast. Yeah. This is a great place. I'm right on like the demarcation line between two troops, and they use this tree right here to go back and forth. Oh, look, 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 look at the tail. Oh. Look at he whips the tail around. Well, let's go and uh, keep following these and see if there's a couple that are sitting in the late afternoon sun. Great, great shot right now, right at the end of the day, the sun has set. It's really in the shadows and these safakas who are running around all day long now have just, it's like their toys have just run out of steam. And I suspect this tree is the one that they probably find every evening. They're settling in for the night and they're just all warm and cuddly and it's a great shot. The lemurs in Madagascar are nocturnal, so you got to go out at night if you want to find them. Just starting to come out. It's a great time to be looking for the mouse lemurs and the sportive lemurs. They should be out. Uh, it's nice and warm. We're looking for eye shine, right? We're looking for eye shine. Yeah, there's a reflective layer at the back of the eyes of lemurs, and it glows like coals, orange coals. Oh, there is one. I got one. Got one already. This is the mouse lemur. This is the rufous gray mouse lemur. So cute. The eyes are so large for a mammal this size. It's one of the smallest primates on Earth. It looks like a mouse, but when you see its hands, it looks very much like a primate.
these are magnificent trees. These baobabs are up to 1,200 years old. From a distance, they look like cartoon caricatures of trees, but when you get up close to them, they overwhelm you with their sheer size. And they're literally water tanks. They retain water that enable them to survive through the long, dry season. And they're great subjects to photograph. They're almost like upside down trees with the trunks and the roots reaching into the air. People are drawn towards simple forms in nature and they don't get much simpler than the baobab. They almost look like children's drawings. I'm just shooting a great shot that exemplifies the back country of Madagascar. It's a zebu cart with beautiful baobabs right behind it. Right on cue. They tower over the landscape. They dominate the landscape. And I love photographing them at sunset when the low angle of light really reveals the texture of the trunks, but also highlights each and every limb. Even a brief visit to the spectacular place reveals its abundance of unique plants, animals, and landscapes. And realizing what we see today is only a fraction of what it once was is a reminder of how precious this island is. Madagascar's plants and animals have taken their own unique twists and turns through time. Today, the strange and wonderful island is one of the most biologically significant and yet threatened places on Earth. I'm Art Wolf. Join me next time on Travels to the Edge.